Hello everybody, my name is Ratnus, and today I wanted to make a video about figuring out which items you should take from the Great Vault, and also just in general planning out your character's progression, you know, which items you're looking for, uh, all of that stuff, uh, because this is something that I feel like a lot of people end up making mistakes that are, or making decisions that aren't really consistent with other decisions they're making on their character's gearing. Um, and so I want to go through some of the heuristics you can use to help make informed decisions in your Great Vault. Now, uh, this one thing that's really useful for this is the add-on simulation craft and then the website raid bots. And I'll show you how you can use those. Uh, the first thing you may be wondering just is when you see a great vault, which item is an upgrade for you? For instance, this character is great vault. Uh, we've got a 259 bracers, but these are worse stats in theory than the other ones uh, for my spec. And then 252 gloves, that's the same item level, but in theory, potentially slightly better stats, uh, depending on, you know, depending on, on all things balanced, the stats maybe aren't uh, that clear, actually. You know, it'll depend on how much of each of the other stats I have. Um, but, you know, it could be possible that either of these items is an upgrade. Uh, unless you have a really deep knowledge of what your character's stats are like at a given time, this is the kind of great vault where it's absolutely possible you wouldn't know which of these are an upgrade without simming it. And there actually is a very easy way to sim this. So again, if you have that sim simulation craft add-on, you just type slash sim C, you have this big old chunk of text, you copy it, uh, and you can use this to sim yourself and your top gear just at any time. You paste it in here. But one thing that it does is it also, if you do this while you're opening the Great Vault, it will include your Great Vault items. Uh, and so you can just tap, you can click here, select all Great Vault items, uh, and it will include them in your list here. Uh, you can also use this to sim other trinkets you might have that you're, you're thinking about using. Um, other legendaries and stuff, uh, other, you know, enchants and things. Um, this is a tool, so you can see here that I have 16 million iterations. Depending on, like, I, I, I pay for the, you know, epic version of the site um, that is a couple bucks a month to, to get more iterations. If you don't have that many, you have to be a little more careful. You know, you, you kind of have to run these, run multiple sims at different times and, uh, you know, sim these things independently of each other. Usually that's fine. Usually they don't really, they, they are pretty much independent of each other, uh, but you can cut down on your iterations pretty quick by like unchecking these things. Um, and then the shards of domination, again, I, I would just leave these things unchecked unless you're trying to sh sim shards. Otherwise it will just hold on to whatever shards you currently have used. Uh, you can also use it to sim different soul bind trees as needed. Uh, some different options on like which which path to go down. But again, as we were talking about mostly, uh, one big thing this does is it, it, it lets you sim your Great Vault options. Uh, so let's just hit the, the find top top gear option. If you don't pay for raid bots, you will have to wait here for uh, all the other people that are using it, which on Tuesdays or Wednesdays can actually be quite a lot of people as a lot of people do this process, uh, but it'll only take five or 10 minutes. So, uh, and then of course, if you do pay, you get to skip the line. Uh, and yeah, let's see what we got. All right, so we're back. I actually had to rerun this to just, I had to tick all the shards I already had so it would sim the new bracers with uh, with the shards in. Uh, and with that, you can see actually that none of the Great Vault items that are being offered to us represent an upgrade uh, for right now. Now, it's possible that, you know, the way itemization stuff works, that I could change around some stats in some other slots and they could potentially end up getting better. Uh, but Turns out that my currently equipped gear is the best gear, and so there isn't an upgrade out of this great vault. Does that mean I should take my, uh, my catalog research instead, my 1500 catalog research? I would say no. I think it's still going to be best for me to take this 259. Uh, good chance that, you know, the start of next tier, or just later on as stats change, as a new build comes out, uh, the item levels could potentially become relevant there. Uh, and this means I will be able to trade this item if it drops for me in raid as well, which means potentially for another player uh, that this is an upgrade for, this could be this could be worth selecting. Um, so that reason I'm gonna go with here, but you could see how this sim, you know, I was kind of expecting this item to actually be simming higher. Uh, you can see it's 52 item level or 52 DPS decrease. You can see how I could, you know, I got surprised here. I could have been surprised to learn, for instance, that this was a DPS increase uh, or was more of a DPS increase than this thing, right? Uh, and I could have taken it on that front. So uh, that is one, factor to consider when deciding in your Great Vault. Another thing to think about that I think a lot of people don't think about is what is the universe of items that this character is actually going to have access to? And then what am I optimizing my character's gear for, right? So 
for instance, this character, I'm optimizing my gear for really just to try and get as many best in slot items as possible using all available gear from this patch uh, to prepare me for next patch, right? That, that That's the thought process uh, on this character because it's potentially a character I'll raid on next tier. Uh, there's a good chance that won't end up being the case, but I want to prepare it as if that is what's going to happen. Um, so I'm in a world where every raid option, for, every raid item from every boss, including Sylvanas and Kel'Thuzad Mythic, uh, and every Mythic Plus item, and every PvP item, although really not every PvP item, because unless there was something insane, I'm not going to go do that, but, uh, you know, though that is the universe of items that I'm picking from, and then my goal is securing best in slot items. So you could construct some great vaults where it would actually, under those circumstances, you know, this raid bot sim here would actually be telling you the wrong thing to take, right? Uh, for instance, say I have, I, yeah, here's a good example of it, right? I have this 239 helmet, um, and I could be offered a bad 240, like a 246 helmet that is an upgrade over this, for instance. Uh, and that could be against, say, a 259 in some other slot that is a smaller upgrade numerically. Or say, even a 252 helmet I could have in my box, right? That could represent a pretty big upgrade. But if the long-term best-in-slot helmet is 259, and I was also offered, say, a 259 ring, you know, and that represented a smaller upgrade, I would still want to, given that priority that I just set out for myself, take that one item that was a long-term best-in-slot item, even if it represents a, sh a smaller short-term increase. That might not be the case for your character, right? You have to decide. For instance, if you are still on progression, uh, if you are working on Mythic Grade bosses, or just most people, like if you're not explicitly trying to optimize for next tier, you know, think about if you want to be doing that or not. But most people are kind of in a default holding pattern of optimizing for this week. Uh, in which case, of course, just take the item that is the biggest single upgrade for this week. Another thing to think about is, you know, I was making this decision assuming those 259 pieces are available, but you sometimes have to think, like, which actual items are potential upgrades for me? And a good way to do this is to run a Droptimizer sim on raid bots. Uh, so again, you, you paste this thing in, but instead of going top gear, you're going to want to click on Droptimizer. Uh, and depending on how much you pay for raid bots, you have to do this again in, in more or less sims. Um, but you can sim not just Sanctum, but you can actually sim Mythic Plus. You can sim specific dungeons or all of the dungeons, again, uh, if you pay for raid bots. Uh, but this, still, this is still a very effective tool. Like, I think you can sim all the raid bosses, even if you don't sim play, pay for raid bots. And just this all dungeon sim is gated behind paying for raid bots. Um, and so what you can do is you can actually see, like, you know, which items are going to be upgrades for you. And then you can you can ignore, for instance, Sylvanas and Kel'Thuzad, right? And you can be like, all right, holding Sylvanas and Kel'Thuzad aside, you know, where is the best belt for me? Where are the best bracers? Uh, all that sort of thing. And you can use that to help make a decision when you see an item in your Great Vault of like, what is the best in slot item for me? You know, what are what are the top three bracers available for me between, you know, uh, so an option is the Mythic Raid, uh, but you can also do a Droptimizer sim, right? And you can look at, say, all dungeons, or you can even go, you could do this eight times, one for each dungeon. Uh, and you could, I would say, sim the 246 item level because that's the highest you can upgrade to. Uh, you can't really count on getting 252s. So I would pretend those don't exist for the purposes of planning out a best in slot uh, setup for your character. Uh, and you can sim with a socket as well, uh, just to make sure that you are getting that correctly factored in as well. Uh, and you can run that sim too, and you can then kind of get an idea of like, where are the good helmets? You know, where if you see something that's a, a relatively small DPS increase, it might still be your best helmet. Uh, but, you know, you might have, say, many, many bracers that represent large upgrades over what you currently have. Again, all depending on what situation you're in. Uh, so this is what that, that raid sim looks like for you. Uh, as you can see, which bosses actually have items for you, uh, and you can sort it by best drop, for instance. So my character gains 128 DPS if I can get a 259 Kel'Thuzad helmet. Uh, <laughs> and for some reason, it's sending these these parade cuffs that didn't sim as an upgrade before uh, as an upgrade now. So go figure. Um, sometimes it just sometimes it just be weird like that. I, I don't know why it's doing that um, in this instance, but it wasn't when it was being simmed separately. Maybe I checked a wrong option somewhere or something. Uh, and then you can see, for instance, again here, right, this Dark Tormentor's Gaze. Big upgrade for my character numerically, but not a best-in-slot item, right? Uh, so this would be a great example, right? If I was offered, say, the Dark Tormentor's Gaze or the Tarnished Insignia of Kel'Thalas, right? Even though this is twice as much of a DPS increase as the Tarnished Insignia, 
uh, this item is not one that I would be using long term, right? Because long term, I'm looking to get this Kel'Thuzad item, whereas this Tarnished Insignia is a long term best in slot item. Um, so these are just some factors you might want to consider, some tools you can use to think through this. At the end of the day, it's hard to go wrong by just picking what the biggest DPS upgrade is out of your vault each week. Uh, but, you know, sometimes you really are trying to optimize. You're really trying to min-max and, and come up with something better. Uh, in which case, this is a, a tool that you can use to do that. Um, and this is also useful for figuring out which bosses should you be most interested in trying to kill for each week. Uh, my guild, for instance, we have everybody run these, and then we, we use this to figure out who is going to be in for which bosses, right? Uh, and trying to figure out who, who needs each boss the most. Uh, and that is a, a great... A great tool to do that. Now, for a lot of guilds, it's just going to be, you know, Kel'Thuzad and Sylvanas basically have this items for everybody because the extra item levels on them. Uh, but the other bosses, it's often very easy to swap out people who don't need items, and figuring out what you need and don't need is useful out of this. Another factor to consider that you might not be thinking about as well is your legendary slot. Uh, always think about, like, hey, do I have a good backup item for my legendary slot? You know, if, if you get a great vault that offers you a good, you know, best otherwise item in your legendary slot, that's a good item to take because that gives you freedom to then recraft your legendary either this patch when a build comes out or you swap your covenants and you're playing some new covenant legendary uh, or just next patch, you know, there might be a new best, best legendary. Who knows what's going to look like there? Um, and it's really nice to not put yourself in a position where you're coming out of this patch and you have like an item level 200. You know, you're forced to rely on some crafted piece in your old legendary slot. Uh, so again, just some considerations as you pick the items out of your great vault. Uh, over the coming days, over the coming weeks, over the coming months. Um, of course, mindset does need to change, you know, at the start of progression, for instance. Instead, usually you're kind of optimizing for your character being strong short-term or potentially medium-term. You kind of have to decide, like, are we beating DPS checks now, or am I kind of optimizing four weeks down the line when we reach the end boss, or six weeks, or whatever the time is for your guild. Um, and yeah, all oh, that's just some some useful tools. Hopefully this raid bots uh, tech is useful for you. If you didn't know about this, very powerful tool. Uh, extremely, extremely strong source of information for this. Raid bots is not a perfect tool. It requires you to, you know, sanity check and think through things. And particularly, like here I, in the course of this video, I've received some conflicting information from raid bots about these bracers. Um, luckily, I wasn't in a position where I actually had a close choice to make, but uh, if that does happen, you do need to go to more sources, figure out more about why it, why am I getting different information here, particularly when you get into the small percentages. Uh, this can this can be something that happens. Raidbots is not an ideal tool as well for comparing two classes against each other. Different classes sim differently. Uh, it's not a great tool for simming in AoE. Some classes do sim reasonably well in AoE, others don't, but it is a pretty darn good tool for comparing broad pictures of which items you're looking for. This sort of thing is one of the most useful things uh, on the site. Uh, and in general, it's just, it's a very useful tool. So uh, it's not something you can just, you know, I mean, you can just blindly use it and it, it'll work reasonably well for you, but you can sometimes get misled by that. Uh, but it is an extremely good tool when combined with a little bit of thinking. Uh, you can always look at statistics as well. It's like raid.subcreation.net for your spec. Uh, and you can actually see here, for instance, like, oh, you know, what are the top parsing bracers that people are using, right? Now here you're going to run into availability issues, right? Uh, you're just going to see, like, what actual people have. Uh, and so uh, rare bracers, like ones from Sylvanas, will just be less represented. Uh, and this doesn't actually correctly catch the, the Titan forging and stuff. Uh, but you can see, you know, the maximum DPS on, uh, on this boss is quite a lot higher for these Viraz's parade cuffs than any of the other ones. So that's a good indication that maybe the very top people who have access to everything are in fact choosing the 259 version of this. Uh, you could delve into this further, but uh, you know, using statistics to, to double check things and make sure uh, that you're, you're doing everything somewhat reasonably uh, is a good, a good also thing to combine with this. Again, uh, there's really no substitute for using a lot of different tools and your brain, uh, but the raid bot's definitely a very useful one. Anyways, I'm rambling now, so I'm going to end the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found something in here that's useful. Uh, if you already knew all this stuff, then congratulations, you're owning. Uh, thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.